Well, hello. How are we all? Let me get you up on the uh, up on the screen here, eh? Good day. Welcome back to TF Custom Shaving Brushes Workshop. I thought I'd just do a bit of an impromptu video. Um, I was sitting in there, what, sitting in the uh, the family room, just watching the TV, and I thought, oh, bugger this! I'm going to go out in the shed and try and turn the handle. And um, I thought, while I'm there, I might as well um, shoot another video. So um, here we are. So uh, welcome back to TF Custom Shaving Brushes Workshop. Um, today I'm going to be turning one of the um, holo holographic um, blanks that we cast in a previous stream, two or three streams ago. So um, yeah, I'm just keen to see how the, this holographic um, looks in the handle. So we're going to turn this one. Um, I was just turning before actually, so you'll, you'll see a bit of a mess on the lathe when we change to some of the other cameras. So I've just sized the blank. I've put a couple of marks on here where I want things to be. Um, the blank was a little bit chippy actually, so um, we'll see how we go. Um, I can't remember if I cast these in um, epoxy or, um, or polyester. I'm, I'm thinking it might have been polyester, hence the reason why it's a little bit chippy. Um, but anyway, we'll see how we go. It should, should still turn okay. Um, we'll keep moving on and we'll turn this into a brush. So just bear with me. It's an impromptu, so I'm not expecting a lot of people in the live chat or anything anyway. Um, so it's just going to be a, a video of me turning the handle and I'll talk you through it um, and let you know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and stuff like that. And if anybody does drop into the chat, feel free to um, ask any questions. So um, let me get cracking anyway. I'll bring up the, uh, the chat channel just so that I can see if anybody drops in. Um, we've got one person just dropped in there now, so um, we'll see how we go. Okay, so I'm just going to continue on. And um, like I said, if anybody drops in, say goodbye. And um, you got any questions along the way, just sing out, aye. Okay, so you'll see, like I said, I've got a bit of a mess already on here because I've been, um, I just turned the, turned the end of the blank just to get it to um, to shape. So um, now I'm just gonna play around and uh, turn the handle and see what sort of, see what we end up with, aye. So at the moment, I'm just gonna square off this end again, just very gently, just till I've got it nice and flat and no marks on it. And, um, oh, just lost power there for a minute. Don't know if we're having any bad um, weather anywhere. We maybe had a little bit of a power drop there. Hopefully we don't have any power issues, otherwise the, um, the stream will go down. But it is what it is. Nothing we can do about it, eh? So that'll do that. Um, now I'm going to fit this knot with uh, this handle with a. Um, I'm going to fit it with a, a 26 mil um, tuxedo knot, synthetic tuxedo. It should be quite nice in that. I'm not going to make it a, a very big handle. I'll make it probably around about the 68, somewhere around about there, um, and we'll set that knot in it, and we'll um, we'll see how it see how it looks from there. But anyway, I'm just going to keep shaping on, and. Um, We'll see how it turns out, eh? So I want to keep this shape fairly simple. I don't want to have nothing too um, too complex. And um, the hole that I'm going to put in the end here will be a, a single 28 mil um, because the 26 will, will take up that 28 mil. And um, so I'll slow that right down so that we're not going too fast for the cutter, generate any heat. It's probably still a little bit fast at that. We'll just slow it down a little bit more and we'll go in and we'll make a cut. So I'll set that on zero on the tailstock and I'll advance the, the bit till we just touch the end of the blank. There we go. And now I can use my gauge on here to measure how deep I'm going with the knot. Probably still a little bit fast. Don't want it to go too fast and generate too much height. We'll 
just let that cool a sec. Go back in. We're only in about 11 mil now. So I'm going to go into about 15. And then we'll stop. And that's just there at about 15. We might change this to a different camera now too, just to um, so you can see what's going on a little bit better there. And I'll just hit that um, edge of that hole with a little bit of sandpaper, so we've got no sharp edge that's going to cut the um, cut the bristles of the knot when we try it in. That's lovely there. And that gives us about 54, 55 mil for the, um, the loft, which is just what I want. So that'll do us there for that. We can get rid of that um, Jacob's chuck now. Put that away. Put the live center in. And we can use that live center once we come to um, do more shaping on the on the handle but for now I'm just going to clean up this top edge and just put a little downward round on it not taking anything off the length of the blank because I don't want to shorten the um, the recess for the knot so I'm only just taking it off around the side of the blank And I'm pretty sure this is polyester, the way it's um, sounding and... I may even just go in and redo that, um, that hole size a little bit if we um, end up being slightly undersized. A couple of little chippy marks in the top that I want to get out. They're almost gone now. So like I said, I may just go in and just make sure that we have definitely got that 15 mil once I've finished doing this and getting rid of those chips in there. Won't be a lot. And that's pretty much that, so I'll just have a look at that now. Stop the lathe, have a look, make sure there's nothing there that... Uh, yeah, there's just a tiny little chip on the edge there, so we'll get rid of that. You can hear it there. Have another look. Yeah, that's looking not too bad. Just give it another just tiny little touch up. And that should about do that, I think. So take that out of the way. Just check the depth again, just to make sure that we are all good. So that's the knot fully seated. Yeah, that's fine. So I don't need to bore it out anymore, that'll do us. Okay, so I've done the top now. I'll just give that a little bit more of a round off again. sharp edges and now we can start shaping but I'll bring the uh, tail stock in for a little bit of support stick the handle there lock it off like that 
and now we can start a little bit of shaping. So I'm going to go in with the platen tool here and just um, separate the black from the um, holographic casting on the bottom section. might be a little bit high and all I'm doing now is I'm just going in here making that top section of the handle round well, getting it it's a little the blanks a little bit out around so we're trying to get it back into round just nice and gently and slowly then no big rush and that's sort of the shape that I'm going to have the top section um, probably a little bit thinner at the base of that top section you can see. might actually just bring in the bigger tool we're getting there just want to still go in a little bit more about that horrible noise but it's just we're getting a little bit of vibration through the outer round once we get it in round it won't be as bad polyester because it's quite hard <sighs> starting to get more round now to um, that camera so you can get a top down shot so you can see that this is slightly out of round but we've now got this pretty much in round and as we work the rest of the handle more and more of it will come into the round as well so
do the tool rest in a little bit as well so we've not got as much tool overhang. should do for that top section I think we can probably start the hole in the other um just give this a little bit of a clean up okay we'll move that back now keep that high And we're going to go in with the carbide cutter now. And we'll start off relatively easy with this because I don't want any, um, any grabbing with the carbide. So we'll just gently work our way along. We'll start rounding that blank out a bit more. The material is quite brittle, um, and quite grabby, so um, just take my time with it.
it's easier to see what's going on when all those shavings are away from around the piece and around the chat. And Just clean up that um, under edge here. in and I'm just going to touch up that top ring just to get, bring that into round now so I'll just come back a little bit and just gently touch that just to get it round that's nice and round now Um, I'll have a little look at that, see what I think. Yeah, it needs to be thin, needs to be thinner in here yet, but I'm gonna just, um, I'll go in a little bit more, we'll thin that a little bit more and then I'll start thinking about setting my, um, my length for the handle. And, um, the shape I'm going to put on the bottom of the handle. Probably a little bit higher yet. Oh. A little bit. Not a lot. I'm just refining that shape a little bit more now and thinning that um, that ring out, that top ring, and also narrowing the handle a little bit more.
and I'm thinking that might do us there now for that. We'll have a have a look. Get rid of the uh, shavings. So that's not too bad, that's looking okay. We could probably still go a little bit thinner there, but I'm thinking now what I'll do is I'll set the, um, set the length of the handle now. So we'll bring the tool rest in close and drop it really low. And I'm going to set my depth or the length of my handle and I'm going to make it a little bit longer than where I put my mark and then that'll give me a little bit flexibility. I can always take a little bit more off. So I'm going to set it a couple of mil lower. So in about there. And then I'll just open that up very, very slightly. a little bit more that'll do that bring this out again lift it up probably about there I think um, and we'll go in with the skew as a scraper and I'll just take that corner off because that's going to be the shape that I want in the handle. Just drop that down a little bit. That's the sort of shape I want on the bottom. And it's about there, maybe a little bit flatter. That'll do me, and now I'm going to bring that curve down into there till we blend that in. And I'm going to make this a little bit hollow um, in shape just where I'm coming down now with the tool so that the handle sort of looks like it's flaring out at the bottom.
take you to the um, overhead shot now so you can see a bit more of the shape of the handle now. And then I'm just flaring that out now. just refining the shape and all the time I'm watching while I'm cutting here but I'm watching here to make sure that I'm getting it fairly smooth and um, that the line's smooth there's no bumps or, or bad tooling marks in it and that if there is any bumps that they're uh, they're coming out So you can see now I'm actually flaring that, that curve out to this point here now. And once we meet up with the curve on the bottom, that'll be us, we'll leave it at that. And that gives me the shape that I want. For this particular handle anyway. So that's all I'm doing here now is just refining the shape, smoothing the shape and finalising that shape on the very bottom of the handle in there. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that's actually looking quite nice. So I might bring the other curve up now to meet that one. If I can. Just very, very gently. And there we are. We've almost blended that curve in now. Almost. And I'm reasonably happy with that. I'll get rid of a lot of this out of the way so we don't pick it up in the chucks and spin it round the chuck. Great, how are you mate? Yeah, I'm sneaking another one mate. I was sitting inside and I was kind of bored. Um, so I thought, I might as well come out here and turn the handle. And I thought, well, I might as well stream it and if nobody comes in nobody comes in but they'll see it later on anyway once it goes once it goes up on YouTube so um, yeah I just thought I'd throw in an impromptu one mate so I've started this little handle here and um, yeah it's looking looking quite nice um, I'm putting a 26 mil 26 mil tuxedo in there so um, I'm just about to stop the lathe and uh, try the knot in it to see how it um, oh, to see how it looks. And this is one of those um, holographic candles, so I'm I'm pretty keen to see how it um, how it looks once it's all um, sanded and. and um, cleaned up so there's the uh, top down shot on it it hasn't been any there hasn't been any sanding or anything like that in it yet but um, we'll do that very shortly I'm happy with the shape I'm just gonna hit that with the sandpaper now and then if I go to the top down shot um, which is um, camera three 
Why are we not? Oh, sorry, I'm on that one. I'm on. That's on three now. So that's the top down shot you're seeing there. And then two is from the side on, which is that one. So that lets you see the shape. It's actually quite a nice shape, actually. Now, the top section of that is very, very similar to the shape that's on that second hand that we're going to be doing for you. Um, so I don't know what you think of that shape, whether you like that shape or whether you want to... Mind you, you didn't like the rounded bottom, did you? You want more of a, um, more of a flat bottom, don't you? Anyway, I'll, I'll keep cracking on. It's good to see you in here, mate. Um, if you've got to duck out or you've got other things to do, mate, feel free. Don't feel offended because I'm just um, playing around with this one and like I said, I was pretty keen to see the, um, the holographic pigment in this one, see how, it, see how it looks. And I've got the other two handles the same as this one um, with the holographic as well, so um, it'll give me something to, to play around with. Actually, I probably need to take a little bit more out with the part tool on this one to give me a little bit more room. Um, so we'll just bring this in again and lock that off. And I'll come in with the part tool just a bit more on the bottom so that I can get in there nice and freely. Speed it up a bit, and I'm just going to come in on the very bottom. So I think that'll do me now, so I think I can um, continue on with the sanding now. So I'll turn the lathe down a bit because um, we don't want it spinning too fast for sanding. Probably about there is okay. And that just lets me get into that very bottom of that handle to, um, to sand that now, which is what I wanted. Yeah, so your other handle, um, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the blank actually, the blank's come up quite nice, um, Brett. Yeah, no worries buddy, all good. I'll be here for a little while yet, the sanding, as you know, the sanding takes a fair while, so... So just give it a bit of a rub by hand now.
Yeah, I don't know how the um, how the holographic's going to come up, but um, we'll soon see once I get through all the grits, I suppose. I think it should be quite a nice effect, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I see we've got a couple of other people in the chat as well. I don't know who they are. They haven't uh, come into the chat yet. Feel free to join the chat if you want to. If you don't and you want to just sit in the background, that's fine too. If you have any questions, sing out in the chat. And if you're new to my channel, if you like what you're seeing, please do subscribe. Click the little bell down below as well and that'll um, give you a notification to say when I post any new videos up or when I go live again. Much appreciated. Channel's only been going for about um, a bit over a month I suppose. Okay, that'll do for that grit. We'll come in with the next grit now. Yeah, your blank I think has come up quite nice, mate. Um, I think it's going to look quite stunning actually once it's turned. Um, and I did get manage to get some spiral um, down, down both ends as well. So um, I think that's going to look quite nice. And it's not over the top, it's not too much spiral that it'll, it'll spoil or take away from the handle. Um, so I think it'll look quite nice, mate, when it's done. With the black top. Um, the coin section, like I said, I, we'll have to work on that. Um, I think I'll mix in some pigment or something with the, um, with the epoxy. Or the other way I could do it would be to, um, to paint it out paint the inside of the recess out with a, a green or a dark green or something like that and then set the coin in that with epoxy. That may work as well. So um, we'll see at the time mate, whatever takes my fancy at the time that's what we'll try. I'm pretty sure whatever I try will work anyway so um, either or. Gonna give this a little bit of a rub with the hand now. I went down to Bunnings and bought some rechargeable batteries today for the um, for the microphone as well. So I've got two sets of batteries and a little charger. So I've got a set on charge now. I mean, I do have replacement batteries here if I need them, um, but the rechargers will just. The rechargeable will just make it a little bit more uh, manageable money-wise. Um, so I'm not continually buying batteries every second or third stream. So um, with the rechargeables that'll be good. And I've got two sets there so like I said I can always have a set on charge and a set on hand so um, that should work much better and be a lot cheaper as well. It wasn't too expensive. They're just a little four pack of batteries with a charger and then four, four pack of batteries on the is um, an extra that gives me eight 
double eyes to play with. And I think they're, uh, they're, they're good for about three, over 300 char recharges, I think the size. So I think it was only about 40 bucks all up for the um, eight batteries and the charger or something. So not too bad. I'm dying to see how these ones look, the um, holographic. That's what it's called anyway, the pigmentation, the glittery, glittery effect that's in the, um, in the pigment. That's what they uh, call it, is holographic. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, eventuates out of that. With a solid black top it should look quite nice. Well when I say solid black top it, it, it should come up pretty much black, jet black, um, but it's actually called carbon black and it is a mica, uh, oh, sorry a, a pearl X powder. So um, we'll see how it comes out but I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll, previous ones I've done it just looks black but there might be a little bit of pattern, a little bit of shimmer in it, so... Um, but it's the bottom section of the handle that I'm keen to see, the actual holographic part. But we'll continue on with the sanding, the boring part. It takes a long time. Oh, we got Razor in. Razor, how are you, buddy? God, I've been sprung, eh? Here's me thinking I can sneak in a little bit of an impromptu video. You guys suss me out. <laughs> I was sitting inside, mate, and uh, I was telling, telling Brett, I was sitting inside and I was watching the TV and I thought, you know, this is kind of boring. I should go out in the shed and have a ply and turn, turn another handle. And then I, I come out here and I started sort of getting set up and I thought, you know what? I should really just stream as well. What the hell, I'm here anyway. Why not just stream it? So I started streaming it as well. And the next thing, Brett dropped in. He's on the road though. But uh, good to see you, mate. Good to see you. How's your weekend been going so far? And I'm happy to report, and I probably won't show you in this stream because I did say I'd keep it till Sunday night, but I'm happy to report that all the chameleons with the holographic um, put in them um, have all turned out okay. Um, so I think we're gonna get some nice brushes out of them. Oh mate, I'm going to do that from time to time. I might even get a few streams in next week because um, my wife's off on, on holiday from work um, next week. Um, so I'll need to give her a little bit of time to herself as well and take, take care of the pups um, sometime as well. But um, I might get a little bit of um, time and, and get back out here in the shed next week and start turning a few handles. Um, I do want to get some done for, uh, well, I want to get your one done, obviously. I want to get Brett's one done on Sunday night. Um, and then the next one I'm thinking will be your one. And then after that, I want to get um, Sir John's ones done. And then I've got another customer one to do in Ferrari red with a special engraving on the bottom. So, um, well, I think it was Ferrari red.
was telling Brett uh, Razor that um, I went down to Bunnings today and bought a little um, battery charger and, and uh, two sets of rechargeable batteries for the, um, the microphone so it won't uh, cost me a fortune in batteries all the time so, um, so I've got two sets so eight, eight batteries in total and the, the little charger and that'll be for the batteries for the um, for the microphone so I can have a set fully charged all the time and um, if the batteries run out midway through a stream I can um, swap them over hopefully and continue on and they didn't have the um, the Energex ones well they had the Energex rechargeables and they had the normal Energex batteries I've always been a, a fan of the Energex batteries um, but somebody mentioned in the uh, in the stream the last time when I spoke about getting the batteries they mentioned about the um, the other ones what were the Vitara or something like that so they had those ones so I ended up just getting those ones with their their little charger so hopefully it'll um, hopefully it'll do the job Yeah, mate. Well, that's the benefit of it, I guess. Once the videos are up there, you can you can watch them anytime, eh? I guess that's the good thing about YouTube. It's um, the videos are always there unless the um, the creator takes them down, you know. So um, and I've got no plans of taking them down. I've just got plans of putting more up. Give this a rub by hand. This is the, uh, I've got one more sanding grit after this one. And then I'll go to the, um, the, the soft touch pads with the wet. So we'll start to get to see what this halo section is going to look like very shortly. I'm hoping it was worth the wait of two and a half months to get it from over in the States. I'm hoping it's uh, worth it's been worth the wait and the cost. <laughs> and um, what I've done with those chameleon blanks, putting a little bit of the halo glitter into them as well, or the pigment or whatever it, whatever it is. Um, I'm glad I didn't put more in than what I did because um, it's just created a nice, a nice effect in that, in that clear. Um, rather than just looking at plain clear, it's actually it has gave them a nice look. So um, should be nice when they're turned. Yeah, full of surprises, Brett, full of surprises, mate. I actually thought as well that um, by doing it through the day, I, I just wondered whether it would maybe attract some new viewers and, um, you know, get a few more likes on the channel. I think we're up to um, 54 likes now so um, I think the next milestone is 55 and then it'll probably jump to 60 or 65 or whatever on YouTube 
they keep setting these milestones for you so um, not that that's any big deal because I'm not really interested in that it's more so um, just getting the channel up and, and you know trying to get people in and gives me somebody to chat to and but if we can get it built up all the better Okay, so that's that grit, so we're onto the last grit in the sandpaper and then we'll get onto the wet pads, so we'll, we'll get a look at how this is shaping up very shortly. Yes, Varta, that, that'd be the one mate, that's probably what I got, yeah, just out of Bunnings. I mean, like I said, I've always been a fan of Energex batteries. They, they seem to last longer than a lot of the other stuff. I mean, I used to use Ever Ready and then, you know, Duracell sort of came along and... Duracell's another one that I've, I've, I've you know, used quite a bit. But, um, We'll see how these ones go anyway. That's all they had. Well, they had the other batteries, but they didn't have the other chargers. So um, I thought, oh, well, I'll go with the charger, the, the batteries that come with the charger, and we'll see how they, how they go. It wasn't too expensive, so certainly save a bit of money down the track, having to keep buying batteries, that's for sure. Shouldn't be too long now, Razor. Shouldn't be too long now, mate. Like I said, I've got the blanks sitting here beside me, but um, I think I'll keep that for Sunday night. What do you reckon? And then I can reveal the whole lot Sunday night. Isn't this COVID thing running away with them down in Victoria, eh? Another, what was it, another 200 or something to die. It's getting up there. In a short space of time. I can't understand how some of the other states don't have it though. I mean, New South Wales are starting to get a little bit worried now, I think. Yeah, Eneloop are good batteries, um, Razor. I use the Eneloop on my um, on my radio control planes. Um, some of my big bigger planes have got the Eneloops in them. They're pretty good, good batteries, last a long time, and they hold the charge really good as well. That's the good thing about all the new batteries nowadays. Um, they all hold the charge, you know, really well, even if they're not being used. They tend to um, hold the charge a lot better. They don't lose it like a lot of the older type batteries used to do. This with a thousand grit next with the water and um, we should start to see how this is going to look once I hit it with a thousand. <sighs> oh 
Okay, well then, um, get my white paper. Might change the view for you now and go to that one so you can see it a bit better, right? Uh, you didn't miss much, mate. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, Melbourne certainly copped it, that's for sure, mate. But um, I think uh, just, you know, with the talk on the radio, on the TV, in the news and that, um, in some of the um, the talk, it, it sounds like um, New South Wales are a bit concerned as well. Or the New South Wales government anyway and the health officials sound like they're a little bit concerned. I hope not, I hope, that, I hope it doesn't come to that, but um, I hope it just sort of, I hope they can contain it just in Melbourne. It's looking nice boys, I'll tell you. Yes, that's looking nice. You, you, I don't, well, I don't know, you, you might be able to see it in the camera. Once we get it all polished and I think there's no water and dust uh, around it, um, you might get to see it better, but that's looking quite nice. Anyway, I'll keep going. I want to give it a good rub with this wet and dry. Okay, I think that'll do it for the um, the wet and dry paper. We might um, get onto the mesh pads now and we'll um, give it all a touch up with that. Just very lightly.
Um, did you comment in here, Brett? I don't know if you can hear that, but I think my possum's in the uh, roller door up above me. <laughs> Making a bit of a noise, I must have wakened him up or something. Yeah, I don't see any comment there, mate, so it might be a face, it might be a YouTube thing or something, because um, sometimes um, if Razor puts up comments about subscribing and that sort of thing, it blocks it out and I've got to allow it for some reason. Um, but I've gone back through the chat and I can't see your comment in there anywhere, so um, I can't, it's not that I can even um, acknowledge it and, and let it go through or anything like that. I don't know where it is, it's not in the, it doesn't appear to be in the chat. Okay, I see you now. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether you were doing that, uh, Brett, or if it was, um, you know, pathology or whatever, blood samples or whatever. I guess it's the same, same, well, similar sort of thing, yeah. It'll be rules in um, Razor, it'll be rules in YouTube um, for blocking stuff out. And I know there's some stuff that I can do as well, but I've never played around with any of that stuff yet. So basically, I'm just default, everything's just default with me here at the moment. I haven't put any blocked words or anything like that in. Um, but I think they've got their own sort of setup in there that they block certain stuff out. Um, how you change it or if there's anything you can do about it, I'm not sure. I'm not that savvy with it all yet. I just get on here and go live.
Uh, this one's getting fitted with a um, a tuxedo, mate. A tuxedo, yeah. A 26 mil tuxedo. Yeah, well, I mean, I do like the tuxedos, um, and I do have a, a whole stack of them that I bought in. Um, so I've got, you know, box a box of each of the um, the 28 mil, uh, sorry, 30 mil, um, 26 and 24, I think, was the three sizes I got. Um, so you know, I'm just I, I want to use them up, and I mean, I've got other ones there, but I. I've got heaps of the tuxedos, so I want to get them, I want to start using them up. I mean, they're quite a popular knot as well, a lot of people do like them because they're nice and soft, and, but they've got still got plenty of backbone and they whip up a real easy, mean lather. But every now and again I like to just throw something different in, you know, so um, That's why I had the um, Plus Often, I think was the last handle that I'd done, but then I wasn't happy with the um, the glue in that one. It was a bit too, the knot looked nice with the handle, but the um, the glue area, because there was so much of the, the knot showing, it didn't look, I, I think it took away from it, spoiled the handle. So um, I need to make sure that I don't go down that track again. But I do think this one's going to look pretty stunning in the black with the um, holographic on the, under, on the underside, the bottom section of the handle. I think that's going to look quite nice, especially when it's all polished up. Yeah, well, I've got um, I've got a fair few two bands there, uh, two band finest. Um, I just can't remember what sizes I've got. I'd have to check sizing for you. But they're the uh, they're the two bands I've been using in a lot of my handles, um, and a lot of guys quite enjoy them. So um, I've never had any complaints about them. That's why I've sort of stuck with them for the last few years. But um, they, they still don't come anywhere near, I mean they're a different class or not, but they don't come anywhere near the, um, the rhodiums, but you're getting the rhodium, you're getting the 27 mil rhodium, which will be, I reckon will be stunning, I think you'll, you'll love it mate, um, they're just a lo lovely knot. Okay, that's that one. Taking a bit longer with these, mate, because I'm going through every other one with um, a bit of a hand sand as well. Not that it really needs it because this is coming up like glass, but. Um, Razor's other brush that I made them, the uh, 
the yellow, yellow and black. Um, that was a uh, two band finest, one of my two band finest. Like I said, they don't compare to the rhodiums, but um, they're still a nice knot, pleasant. Ah, so you're getting your uh, you're getting your weekly weekly uh, setup sorted out, eh? that one Yeah, it takes a few shades for the uh, two bands to sort of break in, mate. But once they break in, they're they're a lovely little knot. Now, Mike, because this one here, um, the um, holographic, because it's clear in the clear in the lower section of the handle as well, I might actually uh, I might actually blacken the bottom of this one out before I set the coin in, and we'll, that will give us an idea, Brett, as to how how uh, your next one's going to go if I do it that way. And the same with the uh, razors because razors is. Um, oh, did you want a did you want a coin in the bottom of yours razor? Nobody's seen your other your your next one yet, um, Brett. It hasn't um, hasn't been posted anywhere yet. I only sent the pictures to you, so you got an idea. Nobody's seen any pictures of your um, your brush yet because that will be the stream on Sunday.
Yeah, we can have a look at that, the choice of that later, but um, it's just a case of whether you want to, um, because the coin might still be partly seen in some of the, some of the, um, the clear. I'm not sure yet, until we turn it we won't really know, but if you want a coin in it I can try and make that work for you as well, you know. My little possum must be up here just behind me. <coughs> up there in the roller door. I can hear him scratching around. Mind you, it's probably, yeah, it's starting to get a little bit darker now, so um, it's probably waiting to come out. Right, the last soft touch pad. But I might put a coin in this one, I might put the antique silver in the bottom of this one. And like I said, that'll give us an opportunity to try mask the coin in the bottom. And I've got an idea of doing that with just black acrylic um, prior to putting the epoxy in and um, dropping a bit of the, uh, well dropping the epoxy in and then dropping the coin in. And I think that might work so um see how we go with this. So we'll get a clean paper towel. We'll give this a little bit of a dry off. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, this is going to be nice. Okay. Right, I'll get this off. I'll take this and go and give it a buff. Um, oh, actually, we've got to turn that around first, haven't we? Part the bottom off, so um, we'll do that first. <laughs> trying to jump the gun, lads, trying to jump the gun. <sighs> right. Um, the big key. So let me go back to that one. going to do it I think. Now these blanks were pretty long so there is going to be um, a fair offcut off of this one but I use a lot of my offcuts anyway um, in other blanks. Um, 
and I do have a few aside for you, Brett. So um, you want to have a ply? Okay. So I'm going to part this off. remember if this was um, epoxy resin or um, polyester resin. I think it might have been polyester. I just can't remember. I might have to watch the video back and check it and see if my uh, assumptions are correct. Pull that out the way. Just check the tool before I go any further. Just a touch. Might just lower that music just a touch. It's my possum up there. Just let them know I'm here. Right, I'll just check that, see how we're going. Yep, pretty happy with that. So we'll give that all a bit of a sand up while we're here. Then I'll cut the hole. bit too fast. That'll do us. that one Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, much better, mate. Definitely a lot better with these um, handy cams as opposed to the uh, the GoPros. I mean, you could see it when you watched the earlier videos. Um, the shot in the Sony Handycam was much better. It was a lot brighter, a lot clearer, a lot sharper um, than when I used to switch to the other two shots, which were the um, the GoPros. You definitely could see the difference in the shots. So now it's very hard to tell one shot from the other because it's, they're all Sony Handycams now. So um, they've all got a certain amount of brightness about them. And, and obviously the increased lighting made a little bit of a difference too, I'd say, no doubt. Okay, we'll hit that with a bit of wet now. <clears throat> and we'll just blend it over into the, uh, the handle, take the sharp edge away. Yeah, no worries, Brett. We'll catch you later, buddy. Right, just get rid of that. Um there and we'll just go in with the pads now give it a light rub up through these grits and then I'll, um, I'll take it to the buffer, give it a buff, then we'll bring it back, put it back on here, give it a couple of polishes. Um, we'll need to drill it out for the, um, the coin. I mean this one would look good without a coin as well, but 
Um, I might try put the antique silver in this because if I can get the antique silver to look okay in it, it'll actually be um, quite a nice little handle. And it'll allow me to try, make sure that I get, um, I can hide the coin in a sort of transparent handle as well, so, which is something that I want to try. Oh, it's Razor going, not you, Brett. I thought it was you going. It's Razor going. No worries, Razor. We'll catch you later, buddy. Once this is polished up, it's going to look really nice, I reckon. Okay, that'll do us for now. And what I'll do is I'll just dry it off. Now we'll need to cut the um, the hole for the coin. Okay, so we'll get this out of the way. Um, take the uh, live center out and we'll put the Jacobs chuck back in with a 25 mil bit in it and we'll just bring it in close and we'll do the um, cut out in the bottom for the coin eh? That's me going into the handle now. That's me touching the bottom, so I'll take it back a touch. Bring it in a touch. That's it there. And then we'll go in about five. And that's about there. Actually, I might go a little bit more because I'm going to put some black in there. That'll do it. So we'll take that out. We'll give that a blow. Now, take this back out. And I'm just going to hit that with a little bit of fine just to round off that sharp edge. That's much better. And then I'll go in and just give that all a little touch up. OK, 
Okay, and that's actually looking not too bad considering. Um, so I think we'll be able to make do with that, Brett. I really think we will. Um, what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to um, give this a buff up. Then I'll bring it back, put it back on here, on the bed of the lathe. I'll um, touch this up with a black acrylic. And then I'll stick the heat gun on it and let it dry a little bit. And then I'll mix up some epoxy and we'll set the um, coin into that. Okay, and I think that should um, give us the look that we're after. So, let me just um, turn myself off and I'll turn the music up a little bit. Give me two or three minutes at the buffer. I'll give it a buff, then I'll bring it back and we'll polish and we'll do what we need to do to finish it off and that'll be us, eh? So just let me give all the electronics a bit of a, a blow off. I like, I like to keep, keep on top of all that stuff so it doesn't get inundated with uh, dust. All right, I won't be long, guys. Let me just turn my mic off and um, I'll...
Okay, I'm back. Yeah, it's coming up very nice, this one. Um, but anyway, we'll get it back on the chuck. I'll, um, actually, I'll just give that a little bit of a wipe out inside because we've got a little bit of buffing compound in there. That should be that. <sighs> Thanks for letting uh, letting the other viewers know that, Brett. Thanks, mate. I'm just going to drop. A little bit of polish on this now and just give it a, a final sort of polish up. I'll let you see a top down shot on this in a tick so you can see what it's actually looking like now. Um, so you can see that halo -y, sparkly effect in there, whatever you want to call it, with the black top. It's actually going to look quite nice. So um, let's get a bit of polish on here, right? Eh? We'll get a clean piece of paper towel. Yeah, I can do that, mate. That's an idea. Um, good idea. I'll do that. I'll create a graphic and I'll put it in the media um, side of the um, audio, the video audio mixer because um, it, it has the images in there so I'll create another one and I'll, I'll put that in there yeah good idea mate right let me just get a little bit of polish on here we only need a touch you don't need a lot we'll get it in there all over the handle chuck as well if need be Put a little bit on there. And this just puts a really fine polish on it. Um, just to, to bring it up properly. And then the next one is even finer. Get a bit in the bottom there because I want to get that a little bit clearer than the than the white that's currently showing in there and then we um, hopefully we can put a little black or something in there and um, hide uh, hide the uh, or get a better look for the coin inside the bottom of the handle I don't think you'll see much once the um, once the coin goes in this to be honest but um, we shall have a look I think once the coin goes in there, she'll be well hidden. So I'll just open this up a bit and I'll go to a fresh bit of pad, turn the lathe up a bit more. And just give that a final polish as you can see in that shot there now. It really um, just brings it up to the next level. Yes, mate, yeah, the, the, um, it'll adhere okay for the coin. And the coins are nice, it's a nice fit in the 25mm hole as well, so um, no, it'll definitely hold okay. And it's only a very, very, um, it's just really to, I mean, I reckon, to be honest, looking at that handle, I reckon I could almost just glue that coin in there, and I don't think you're going to see it in there anyway. 
um, to be honest. I might even do that. I'll, I'll, I'll stick it in without the paint. And um, I think the coin, once the coin goes in there, I think you're going to lose it anyway. Um, yeah, so um, we'll do that. We'll, we'll put it in without the coin and we'll see how it looks because I reckon it's going to look good. All right, now just a little bit of the uh, plastic, plastics just to um, finish it off. Oh, that'll be more than enough for the whole brush handle. And again, I'm just gonna turn the lathe down so we don't flick all the product off. Work the product into the um, handle first. at that slower speed. Work the top edge. Work that edge. And then I'll open this up again. And now at a higher speed, I'm just going to give that a light buff. And work down into that little centre point as well. And there we have it. So, um, I'll take that out the chuck. It's got a nice shine to it actually. And um, I'll get my little glue board sure there's no wet glue on there, bit of hot melt glue there. I'll lock that in there. I'll dig me out a coin. Medallion, coin, whatever you want to call it. Sit that there so you can see it. That's the antique silver. We've got the knot here. And we've got the handle here. And I'm gonna glue the um, the coin in first. So I'll get my epoxy. I'll need to grab myself a little mixing stick. So, I'll mix a little bit up over here, 
<coughs> that should be enough I think before I mix up the next lot I'll just um, give the bottom of this a, a rub a dub dub roughen it up bit around the edge it's good having that little screen there because um, you can see everything I'm doing rather than having to keep switching the cameras all the time so even although I've got the shot in the coin you can still see what I'm doing sort of off-camera shot. So there we go, there's the knot, there's the handle. We'll put part B in now. There's part B. That's that done. Give this a little mix up. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I just want a little bit on the tip of the brush just to drop in that little hole there. And then just enough to spread around out to the outer edge so we can then um, glue the coin. And any excess glue, like I said, I can wipe off with a bit of methylated spirits after, just to make sure everything's um, glued. Like I said, I don't mind seeing a little bit of glue coming out because then I know that I've, I've got it well glued, you know, there's, it's making contact. a little bit too much glue on what happens is I get a hydraulic in effect because the coin as the coin goes in it sort of seals off around the edge and the coin the air underneath the coin pushes the coin back out again um, but in the case of this one that's went in nicely and I can feel that it's got resistance against it so we've got glue there and I've got glue off of my fingers, so we'll wipe that with the um, with a clean cloth and um, a little bit of methylated spirits. So, seeing that glue coming out, like I said, I, I'm happy that I can see that because then I know I've got, you know enough glue in there to do the job that it's there to do. And if we get it off straight away, then we don't end up getting it on our hands and spreading it everywhere. Now that, I can't even see that coin in the bottom of that handle. So I think we're going to be good with yours as well, Brett, to be honest. Um, I mean, yeah, yours has got different colours in it to this one. This one's um, black halo with the antique silver coin that I'll show you in a tick when I get the, uh, get the knot glued in. Still getting a little bit of glue out, so that's why I'm keeping wiping it probably a little bit more glue than I would have liked to see but at least I know it's glued Okay, I'll come back to that if we need to. 
So now all I'm going to do is drop the rest of that, or the majority of that, into here. Ah, uh, you're not actually seeing that, are you? So I need to, um, let's try camera two. I don't know if you're going to see there either, but it's better than not seeing it at all. I'm just going to scoop up a little bit more. Drop it in there, wipe it up the sides. Spread it all over the base. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just the packaging, but once they've been used a couple of times and wet, you know, they, they loosen up again and go back to um, where they should be. As you, yours should have rounded off now, have they? Have they? Now, just before I stick that one in, I'm just going to sit that there. I have got a little bit of epoxy on the top of this handle, so I want to make sure we get that off before we go sitting the knot in. Otherwise, we'll um, we'll have an issue. Make sure my hands are clean. And I will have to go back to that coin. That's lovely. Okay. So that's the knot set. I'm just going to turn this to a fresh piece of paper and then I'll put a little bit more metal on it and we'll go back to the coin. The coin's actually setting in place now, it's not turning like it was before. So we're um, nearly there with it. But I'll just make sure that I give the whole handle a bit of a wipe. Make sure that I haven't left any little fingerprints or anything on it. That's looking okay. All clean. I'll just have to be careful with this one until it really sets. Yeah, the coin's almost there now. Make sure there's nothing on the top section either. As far as glue is concerned. And then just check the knot. Yep, setting, starting to set. Okay. I should bring a microfiber cloth out here so I can give that just a final final clean up too um, so you can see it full shine I mean it's still down a little bit because I've been wiping it with methylated spirits and, um, but when I take the photographs later and post them up on the um, on our Facebook TF Custom Shaving Brushes Facebook page you'll, you'll see it in the photographs a lot better anyway and I give it a wipe with um, a microfiber just to polish it up Anyway, enough of that. Um, we are done. Gave myself a little bit of cleaning up to do for tomorrow now. Um, but there we have it. The TF Custom Shaving Brushes Halo Black. Black top. 
and if you look in the bottom here, um, right, you can see there's just like a little, I mean it doesn't detract from the bottom of the brush, it just looks like you're looking at the base of the brush really. Um, and there's the coin. And you can see it's recessed in below the surface there. And when I turn it side on, that's all you're really seeing. Um, it doesn't detract from the handle. If I turn the handle that way so that you're looking down onto the coin, you don't really see nothing in there. Might be a little bit different with your one being more clear than this one, I guess, because the um, the holographic in here picks up the fine particles in it, and it sort of shows it up sparkly. Um, so that could be detracting from seeing that little bit in the bottom there. But being honest with you, that it, it, it's fine. It doesn't detract from it at all, which is what I was more concerned about. So, um, let me just go to the top down shot now so I can try and get the handle in view there for you as well. So there you can see the holographic, so you can see my fingers running, you know, focus, focus, yeah, there it goes, you can see my fingers running in behind the holographic pigment. Again, you can't really see the coin at all. There's a few finger marks in here, but that would be her, there she is black holographic, black top, synthetic tuxedo. Really nice. I'll give it a little bit of a polish up when I go inside and um, I'll take some photographs and, and throw them up on the TF Custom Shaving Brushes Facebook page. So if you want to see the finished photographs, um, jump onto the page and have a look. Um, but that's it for now. I'm, um, that's me done basically so um, until tomorrow night we'll be live streaming again tomorrow night um, 7, 7, 7 p.m. Queensland time um, we'll be on tomorrow night uh, and we'll be doing um, Brett's brush which is a transparent well transparent different colored grains with a bit of a swirly effect in it um, and a black top um, and I'm not going to show you up close, but I've got it ready. There it is there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll see that one tomorrow. And I've also got a reveal on the chameleon. Um, let me go to that shot there. I've also got um, a reveal being done on, uh, what is it, four or five chameleon blanks. Um, actually, five chameleon blanks. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I've got five chameleon blanks to reveal tomorrow night as well. Um, I'm quite impressed with how they've come out. Um, can't wait to actually turn some of them into handles as well. So I'm, I'm thinking that they're going to look pretty special as well. Um, so until then, let me get my little ending screen up here. We'll call it a night for tonight. And... Um, Thanks for dropping in again, Brett. I know you're a busy man out there on the road, so um, Razor had dropped in as well, so thanks, Razor. And uh, anybody else in the background there that's been watching the stream, I know we've had a couple in through the length of the stream. Thanks for dropping in and having a look. Um, make sure you give, a, give us a subscribe down below, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell button and you'll be reminded when I go live again or when I post up any other videos to the channel. Um, much appreciated. Thanks guys, we'll catch you next time, eh? Cheers. Till next time, thanks guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>